The four stages of a market bubble are the stealth phase, the awareness phase, the mania phase, and the blow off phase. In this video, we'll talk about these stages and how you can take actionable steps to protect yourself and prepare for the bubble to burst. And remember, it's not if it will burst, it's when it will burst. If you're worried or wondering if you should be worried, stay tuned. Shout out to our Everything Money community members for requesting this video. The first stage is stealth phase. Smart money, like banks and investment firms, get wind of a deal, a product, a trend, and begin to invest as prices remain relatively low. As these larger corporations better understand the fundamentals of these assets, they start their positions, not often noticed by the general population. Come on, look, in my I'm cleaning in here. No, no, you take breaks too long. The second stage is awareness phase. Investors start noticing these new trends, they start buying in, and prices begin to slowly increase. Some folks start to take profits, but in general, news and media outlets catch on, they want to give their viewers their daily fix, and they start pushing the concept of how great the future will be. This boom in attention naturally entices and excites people, especially the ones who probably shouldn't be invested in these things to begin with. The third stage is by far the most fun. This is the mania stage. Normal people catch wind of a can't-miss investment that could be one of the best investments of their whole lives. FOMO, or the fear of missing out, starts to set in, and people inevitably have to buy in and get on this rocket ship because it's heading to the moon. Enthusiasm is high and things are looking up. People start dreaming about becoming millionaires without ever doing the hard work that it actually takes to become one. Instead of just falling into the FOMO of just wanting to buy because you're afraid that this is going to shoot to a billion dollars per Bitcoin and you don't want to lose out and you want to get rich quick without having to do anything. Fundamental analysis gets thrown by the wayside as the hype ensues. The higher the price goes, the more people have to jump in. A rapid case of recency bias sets in and investors think the prices will continue to skyrocket. Fans of these investments are very quick to celebrate and create stories that justify the current overvaluations of the assets. Frothy assumptions are made about the future, and formerly speculative investments become can't-miss opportunities. Likewise, inflation tends to be low, interest rates are low, and normal folks start borrowing cheap money to buy houses, to buy automobiles, and even to invest. The herd mentality sets in as this mania spreads to cocktail parties and Friday night barbecues. It's a natural human emotion to want to be part of these things. And it's certainly fun to get involved in these investments with your friends, especially when they support you. Go for it, Stephanie. Credit is very cheap, so people start to overspend, thinking that these riches will continue to come. Keep them coming, Granny! People are happy, they're going to concerts, they're spending money, they're buying new things. And life is just friggin' great. Sometimes it's even coupled with the government just straight up handing out money, like tax credits or COVID relief checks. We tend to lose sight of the age old saying of buying low and selling high, as we start to buy higher and higher as prices rage upwards. If you're on YouTube at all, you've noticed hundreds of channels promoting hundreds of investments. Gives Tesla a market cap of almost seven trillion dollars especially of stocks of companies that literally hardly have a product let alone any profit but one of the stocks moving the most it's obviously lordstown motors up 50 percent on the day not 15 and they have a joint venture to co-develop electric vehicles for the global market with an additional 100 million dollars invested from foxconn so the latest update from the company it says um it plans to del deliver something like three to five hundred of its electric trucks in the second quarter of 2022. This euphoria can last for years as predictions and projections of the future reach previously silly levels. Valuations of companies skyrocket. New and exciting companies take advantage of this hysteria and go public with IP prices that destroy any expectations. We saw this primarily in the electric vehicle market these last three years. With the emergence of Tesla and its growth pattern, other companies were quick to get on board to make EVs and show them to the public to bolster their stock price and raise their company valuation. We literally saw car companies make completely fake vehicles and roll them down a hill to make advertising and promotional pieces 
to drum up interest and get you to buy a company that doesn't even exist yet. And spoiler alert, it absolutely worked. Companies like Rivian, Nikola, Workhorse, and Neo were propped up and touted to be the next Teslas. And tons of new, young, inexperienced investors flocked to gobble up their stocks. Tesla started taking quarter million dollar down payments to create cars they haven't delivered in four years. And unless you've lived under a rock, you certainly know where I'm headed with this, as the popularity of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies have surged, and this blockchain technology craze has reached absurd levels. New crypto coins were being created on a daily basis, many of which were complete scams. And young American men couldn't wait to buy them up and trade them. Overnight, new investors took to their new gambling and casino style apps to buy and trade currencies at sometimes dangerous amounts. And the emergence of non-fungible tokens, NFTs, quickly followed, where investors were buying up digital assets at extreme prices, while the older, out-of-touch people were simply just left to be confused. NFL players started taking their salaries in Bitcoin, and new YouTube gurus emerged. I didn't know anything about crypto. I put some money into it and hopefully it exploded, right? And it did. Those two coins turned my $500 into $16,000 in about a month time frame. To add fuel to the fire while gaining national attention and millions of followers. These YouTubers made it seem so easy to get rich. So I was 18 years old when I made my first million dollars. Life-changing wealth by simply buying, holding, and having diamond hands. And I'm saying all this like it's crazy, while the majority of the world thinks it's just wonderful. Good, great, grand, wonderful. We've seen this alongside this housing market. Young married couples with new jobs are trying to buy the house of their dreams, buying 30 year old houses with 53 same day offers after an afternoon open house, some of which were all cash and 10, 15, 20% over asking while often even waiving home inspections altogether. But the crazy part is we've seen this happen time and time before. In the 1630s, there was a Dutch tulip mania, as crazy as that sounds. Normal folks started falling in love with bulbs of flowers, and valuations of these flowers began to soar to ridiculous levels. People were literally trading acres of land for a single flower in efforts to sell them to the next person at a higher price. And in the end, it all came crashing down. The deflation of tulips created a widespread economic chill in the Netherlands that lasted for years. In the market crash of 1929 here in America, which was followed by the Great Depression, valuations of companies went through the roof as consumer debt increased and it all came crashing down over the course of a few days. We sadly heard stories of people jumping out of windows to their death after their portfolios fell apart. In 1999, any company with the word tech or .com in its name was given massive valuations. The internet was one of the biggest and best things to ever happen to humankind. New companies were coming out of the woodwork and investors were piling in to get a piece of the action. The stock market roared to all time highs and then it fell apart. I'm beginning to see a pattern here that I'm not so sure if I like. <laughs> Even the Goliath Amazon once fell 90% in value. And in 2008, we saw the same hysteria in the housing market. Normal Americans, some without jobs, any income, any credit scores, were given multiple mortgages on houses they probably shouldn't be buying and certainly couldn't afford. I find houses and a condo. Hey, there's a bubble. In tandem, big banks were trading and betting on the housing market, one that could never fail. This story was portrayed in the movie The Big Short, where a seemingly unknown investor, Michael Burry. The whole housing market is propped up on these bad loans. They will fail. Recognized the disconnect in this valuation and betted against the housing market, which was an absurd and radical move at that time and resulted in billions of profit none of these previous euphoric highs lasted, despite what common people thought would happen during those periods. Each of these events resulted in an enormous bubble bursting. At some point, the hits the fan, which leads us to the fourth stage, 
the blow off phase, the fall from heaven. An exorbitant high is inevitably reached in the market and an event or a series event triggers something. Prices start declining and a variety of finger pointing and blaming starts. Companies like Netflix can report bad earnings and fall 48% overnight. Some are very quick to deny the impending doom that's coming, shaking off the warning signs and turning a blind eye to reality. Michael Burry was called crazy for his big short in 2008. He was a non-believer in the hype and nobody would listen to him. Here at Everything Money, we are often criticized for spreading FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, as we refuse to join the crypto and NFT trains like other channels. However, as markets start to collapse, assets are unloaded in panic. The fall triggers capitulation as stockholders throw in the towel and give up on trying to get back any of the gains. So Sell-offs lead to price drops, which leads to more panic selling, which triggers large hedge funds to sell, leaving the paper-handed normal folks holding the bag as they frantically jump ship. The house of cards begins to collapse and businesses and people start going bankrupt. What follows are years of unemployment, personal hardship, and global supply chain issues like we're seeing today. This was the case after the Great Depression, in the post 9-11 era, and after the 2008-2009 housing market crash. So where are we now on this diagram? By all accounts, we are definitely in post-mania, perhaps even in the fear phase. Rising inflation, war in the Ukraine, surging gas prices and supply chain issues that are crippling businesses, potential COVID lockdowns, tons of help wanted signs all over the nation, and stock crashes like all of those EV companies I mentioned before, as well as most of the cryptocurrencies. These seem to be direct indicators of our position on this four stage graph. But as a value investor, the bubble bursting stage is our mania stage. During the world's mania stage and frenzy, we're sitting tight in hibernation, patiently waiting for everything to pop. Good thinking. So we can get the assets we like by the stocks of the companies we love at the lowest prices. And we look very stupid and wrong along this whole process. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. This is the exact spot we want to be in and where the most amount of money can be made. You go and do something like this and totally redeem yourself. <laughs> we wait for the pop to buy. We wait for the rest of the world to say, this is absolutely the worst time to buy something. Here at Everything Money, we've said for years that when the rest of the world finally gives up on an amazing company like Apple, that's when we get interested. That's when value investors strike. We buy low. Any event or series of events may elongate our position on this graph. In the end, we can't quite define where we're at in this cycle. You should always be aware that the bubble is going to burst, whether you like it or not. No! Prepare yourself and your family accordingly. Spend frugally, save more, and be ready to make sacrifices. As hard as that sounds. Good luck, and we'll be here to help you.